Let's talk about Legacy System Migration Workbench, or as it's more commonly known, LSMW, which is also the transaction code for starting the LSMW application. To understand where LSMW fits in a bigger picture, the appropriate use cases for this tool, you have to begin by considering the best practice steps for data migration. Loading data is only one step in a process, and SAP Data Services is relevant in context of best practice steps, regardless of your choice for the load step. SAP Data Services is the only tool that provides functionality for all best practice steps for SAP data migration. Any of the load step options can be used with SAP Data Services. A key takeaway is that you're not going to execute an SAP S4 HANA implementation project with only one load option. The appropriate tool for the load step is a decision that you'll take by data migration object, and you're certainly going to end up using more than one option if many business objects are in scope. Load step options are listed here in typical order of consideration. When it was introduced in 1998, LSMW was at the top of the list, and it has since dropped. It's no longer the recommended tool for SAP data migration. With that said, LSMW remains very relevant in S4 HANA, especially in SAP Retail, and particularly for SAP Retail Article Master, because no equivalent retail content exists for SAP data services or for migration cockpit. What's more, LSMW is uniquely a tool that functional resources can use to load data or perform mass updates. It's not just a tool for initial data migration. Simple tasks can be created and executed simply by functional resources. Beyond simple tasks, LSMW is an industrial strength tool that can handle complex tasks by including ABAP code and high volume tasks that create or update millions of records. The basic flow for an LSMW scenario for one business object begins with source data, which eventually must be in the form of one or many text files. The LSMW project consumes the source text files, maps their contents into the required format for the target object, and the data is loaded into an SAP system. That logical flow from source to target object is exactly the opposite of how you should think about data migration, whether it be an LSMW project or any other load tool. No, for that purpose, you begin with the end in mind. You focus sharply on the target object and then work your way back towards the source data. So what's the target object? Well, that's your first decision. LSMW provides several options for loading data, but I'll focus on the two options most used by functional resources, screen recording and iDocs. Screen recording, also known as batch input recording, is useful for simple and low volume data migration or mass update requirements. Sometimes it's the choice because no standard IDOC exists for the business object you're trying to load or update. Either way, LSMW projects based on screen recording are easy to create, albeit with some limitations. For example, SAP GUI screens with grids are difficult or sometimes impossible to deal with. And some SAP GUI screens aren't batch enabled and won't work with this approach at all. Changes to screen recordings aren't easy to implement. Multiple recordings are required for create and update, and there's less flexibility in error handling and reprocessing. In contrast, an LSMW project for IDOC creation can significantly be more complex to create. It demands deep functional knowledge of the business object, rudimentary understanding of the specific IDOC to be used, and perhaps even some technical knowledge to create or execute. But this is simply not beyond the grasp of functional resources, and it's the gateway to stable and high volume processing. Another reason to choose IDOC creation via LSMW is that while most configuration and business rules are observed during IDOC processing, not all business rules are enforced. That means you enjoy the possibility, and you accept the responsibility, for updates that might not be permitted while using SAP GUI. Having decided on the target object, whether screen recording or IDOC, the concepts and steps for creating and executing the LSMW project are largely the same. You first study the target object, the requirements, and then derive the definition of the source data files that will satisfy your requirements. That's the beginning and the end of it. 
or perhaps I should say, the end and the beginning, which is the correct order. The first concept to deal with is one-to-many relationships. Think about this as the possible difference in shape between the target and source data structures. You've got to bring these two shapes into alignment with each other. These relationships are defined by source structures. Source data files are assigned to the source structures, usually one-to-one. -one. So I usually think about source structures as being the same as the data files. Source structures are assigned to target structures by so-called structure relations. Target structures could be validity areas in a screen recording or segments in an iDoc. End-to-end, -end, these three define the one-to-many relationships from target to source. Overall, conceptualizing and defining one-to-many relationships is probably the most difficult LSMW concept to master. But the good news is that it's more or less irrelevant for simple cases. In the simple case, there's a one-to-one -one relationship between the target and the source. If your requirement is to create or update only basic data, then there's only one level of data in the target, and therefore only one source data file is necessary. For example, to update one or more fields of the basic data view of the article master, say the article description or the purchasing organization, then only basic data of the target is involved, and only one source data file is required. The source data file will include the article number, the primary key for the business object, and the data elements to be changed, for example, article description or purchasing organization. For the screen recording, the T-code will be executed by LSMW once per article number, or the LSMW will create an IDOC for each article number. That's one transaction for each article number. That's one transaction per primary key value. But let's take a slightly more complex scenario. For example, let's say you want to update purchasing organization on the logistics DC view of the article master for multiple distribution centers. That's table mar C, and the primary key is the combination of article number and site number. That's material number and plant number for non-retail systems. That scenario requires multiple target structures, basic data level and site level, and likewise multiple source data files one source data file for the basic data and one source data file for the site level data. One IDOC will be created for each article number, but each IDOC may have multiple segments for the site level data, one for each article site combination. So you can see the complexity begins to increase when you have different validity areas that need to be created. The next concept is field mapping. You map fields from a source structure to a target structure. In the simple case, source data for a field is simply transferred to a target field. For example, a value of 102 for purchasing organization is directly transferred from a source data to a screen field or to an IDOC segment field. LSMW includes options for simple field mapping conversion rules. For example, move with leading zeros is a popular choice when source data doesn't include the leading zeros, but the target structure does require leading zeros. This is often the case with IDOC processing, with material number being a good example. The ArtMass IDOC demands leading zeros to 18 characters, but only when the article number is numeric. You can immediately see that field mapping conversion rules can simplify the data preparation requirements for the source data files. When you choose a field mapping conversion rule, behind the scenes, LSMW adds a small amount of ABAP code to your LSMW project to implement the rule. You also have the possibility to adjust that ABAP code, or to add a few lines of your own ABAP code to implement a field mapping conversion rule that isn't in the standard list. This is extremely powerful, and it's not that hard to do for some simple cases. For example, you might want to look up a value in an SAP system and fill the field with that value. That's only one line of ABAP code and easily found with a Google search. You might want to fill a field with a value based on some condition, an if-then statement. That might be three lines of ABAP code and, again, easily found with a Google search. The key takeaway is this. You have exponential problem-solving power available for a small amount of additional effort. Everything we've discussed so far is defined by an LSMW project. 
It's all contained in an LSMW project. That includes the source and target definitions, the field mapping and conversion rules, and even the screen recordings if you use that option. That's important to know because you can export an LSMW project to a file on your local PC, and you can import an LSMW project from a file on your local PC. Using Export Import, you can move LSMW projects from a development system client to a quality system client and even to a production system client, although security rules generally don't permit LSMW in a production system. Again, notice that your approach to thinking about crafting an LSMW project is a progression from the target object to the source data files. You begin with the end in mind. This concept, this conceptual sequence of operations, is realized in the organization of the LSMW program. You work through the process steps in order to define the structures in the field mapping. You can't skip any of the highlighted define and map steps. When that's done, when you have a completely defined LSMW project, then it's possible to repeatedly perform the read steps followed by the execute steps for your target object type. LSMW provides for organizing many LSMW objects within a mandatory three-level hierarchy of an LSMW project. This is a handy way of organizing related LSMW objects. So when you create an LSMW object, you must specify names for the project, the subproject, and the object. And when you execute an LSMW object, you must specify the project, the subproject, and the object. When you export or import an LSMW project, you can choose all or only selected subprojects and objects. Lastly, there's an LSMW administrative screen for managing LSMW projects. After starting LSMW, choose More, Go To, and Administration. The administrative screen enables deletion of an LSMW project, subproject, or object. You should be careful to manually delete an LSMW object before importing an LSMW object with the same name.